The Notorious Lift Radix. Let's talk about it. So this is not my full review. This is gonna be an overview of the shoe. A lot of folks have asked and they don't feel like waiting for my full review. Totally understand that. But I'm also gonna take this model and compare it to the 100 Aerolux Barefoot in this model. That's all gonna be timestamped down below. So please jump around accordingly and be efficient with your time. But four first impressions that I have with the shoe based off my first couple of workouts and days wearing this model is number one, I think if you are somebody who is a power lifter or a recreational lifter and you want that barefoot shoe for lifting specifically and large specifically deadlifts as well, this can be a really good option to look into. So this model kind of reminds me of a blend of the 100 Aerolux Barefoot and then also the Advances Apex Power. I kind of put all these three shoes into the same category of both being very dialed for deadlifts and lifting in general and most, more specifically power lifting. And this model I think should deliver really well for you. So two reasons why I like this model for lifting. Number one, the stack height of this shoe comes in at 3.3 millimeters. So that's wicked thin. Like even with this shoe, you can see like how easy it is to squeeze the sole. So if you want to get as close to the ground as possible, this can be a really great option to look into. The rubber sole in this model is two millimeters thick and then the lugs are 1.3 millimeters thick. So you get wicked close to the ground and with this shoe, you can take that insole out and it does have an internal finish construction. So you can get wicked close to the ground if that's something you're after. The second reason why I like this model for lifting is this Novus tread patterning. So that's kind of like Notorious looks like more proprietary rubber tread. I think it does a really good job at giving you a nice grip on turf and whatnot. This model's outsole has been wicked grippy and on different surfaces in the gym. I don't think you're gonna have slip issues. And honestly, I do like the grip of the shoe a little bit better than the 100 Aerolux Barefoot. Now, the second first impression that I have with this shoe is I like the toe box width. So with this model, you have a good amount of width up here through the forefoot and through the midfoot. So you don't have a wicked aggressive taper here, which I like. Plus with that thinner stack height, I don't think it's gonna throw off folks. So if you do have a flatter foot and you don't like any form of sidewall on the medial part of your shoe, I think you will enjoy that about this model, how it's not super aggressive. And then with the toe box, I like that there's a little bit of this reinforced material around to kind of help give you a nice lockdown feeling. So if you're a sumo deadlifter, for example, and you're driving to the lateral parts of your shoe, I don't think you're gonna have issues. I like that they have TPU overlays and cages on the medial and lateral side of this model's forefoot. And those are features that I think really help the shoe excel for deadlifts. The third first impression that I have with this model is I like that they kept the branding minimalist on this shoe. So you have some Notorious Lift branding here on the tongue, but then back here on the boot as well. But overall, it's pretty dang simplistic. So while the shoe is dialed for lifting, I like that you kind of can wear it more casually. Now with the outsole, because it does wrap up, it doesn't give it the most casual look per se, but because the colorways are wicked clean and there's not a ton of branding, I think you can kind of have the shoe perform in those dual functionality worlds. Like I've been wearing the shoe on a daily wear basis, walking the pub, running errands and whatnot, and I don't feel like I'm wearing an overly focused gym barefoot shoe or it looks like wicked out of place. So I like that about this model as well, especially when you consider it's a hundred dollar price point, giving it a nice range for folks who might just want that shoe for lifting specifically, but then also maybe wear out and about sometimes. My fourth first impression with this shoe is that the tongue can slide a little bit. So I noticed this specifically when cross training in this shoe and that's kind of why I think this model is gonna excel best for lifting specifically. They will work for cross training, don't get me wrong, like I have used them for sessions in that, but the tongue can slide a little bit. The tongue isn't gusseted and there's no additional loop here on the tongue. So I did have a little bit of tongue slide, not the biggest deal, but I think that is gonna mean you're gonna have to be a bit more strategic with your laces here and making sure you're laying that tongue flat before you start training. And now more specifically, I think if you're pushing into the lateral parts of the shoe, you might have a bit more so when doing skater strides or any form of like lateral work. When I was doing lateral sled drags, that's kind of when I picked up on this the most. So in the context of when that's gonna happen, I think it's gonna be more prevalent when doing anything laterally. So just keep that in mind. It's not the biggest deal for overall performance, but it was something I did notice with the shoe right away. Now, when discussing the sizing and fit of this shoe, I'll cover more detail in my full review on this model sizing and I'll compare it to other shoes. And I also have some shorts on that if you wanna check those out on the channel. But this model, I bought true to size. So I'm a size 10. I have an E to double E with foot, normal arch. The shoe fits okay for my foot anatomy, but it does run a little bit short if I'm wearing thicker socks. So that said, I think if you have a wider foot, size up a half size. If you have a narrow or medium width foot, or if you just like snugger fitting shoes, you should be okay going true to size, but I think half size up will be a safer call, especially for folks who are buying these because they have more room in the toe box. But now let's compare these to the 100 Aerolux Barefoot. So now let's talk about some construction differences between the 100 Aerolux Barefoot and the Notorious Lift Radix. So looking at the toe boxes of these shoes, they both have synthetic or TPU overlays that help give you additional security around the toe box. With the Radix, you also have an outsole that rips up, just like in the Notorious Lift. So these are features that are very similar with both these models, but I think really different differentiate the most regarding their toe box constructions is with the material. In the 100 Aerolux Barefoot, this mesh is a bit more lightweight 
and it doesn't have as much volume and it runs a smidge narrower than the Notorious Lift Radix. In the Radix, this material is a bit heavier. It doesn't necessarily breathe as well as the 100 Aerolux Barefoot and it does give you a bit more upper volume. And I think with this more flexible sole, that's what also helps contribute to this shoe's like more spacious fit through the forefoot. So that said, the 100 is a little bit more breathable, but the toe box in the Radix is a bit wider and it's a bit more heavy regarding its upper construction, which could be a good thing for some folks who really like that security in their shoes. And then when looking at the midfoot construction through the midfoot and heel over here in the 100 Aerolux Barefoot, we have that same lightweight mesh material that goes into the heel here. And then the heel has this like synthetic and TPU overlay. There's not a ton of structure to this model's boot. And it is very thin. The tongue has loops going up. It is not gusseted, but the tongue security on the 100 Aerolux Barefoot does a pretty good job. You also have a padded mesh tongue, and then you also have one, two, three, four, five core outlets that go up in the shoe. Overall, the midfoot security is pretty dang good in this model, but you don't get a ton of structure back here on the boot. Looking at the Radix, you have that heavier mesh material with that TPU cage wrapping around this shoe through the midfoot back here into the boot. The boot itself has a bit more structure and there is more padding. So if you do like more padded and structured boots in your barefoot shoes, that would definitely be something to consider between these two models as well, outside of the forefoot being a little bit different. And then looking at the midfoot, you have one, two, three, four, five, six core outs that go up with a seventh back here for lace lock. You have a padded mesh tongue. The tongue is wicked comfortable and I do like the laces on the shoe, but once again, I think you can have a little bit of tongue security issues if you're doing lateral work in this model just because there is nothing really locking this tongue down. Hopefully like the V2 will have some more security on the shoe's tongue. And looking at the sole of the shoe, you have the Novus rubber tread. I like that this wraps up on the outskirts of the shoe. It helps give you additional security. So you pretty much have like this nice 360 lockdown feeling in this model. The tread patterning is this, like arrow like tread and like you could see like how thin this is. Like you can even see like I was just like squeezing this and it's kind of like left that indent. So then when you stand in it, it feels wicked flat and wicked flexible. So I do like that about this shoe. And I think that's what's gonna help it feel really dialed in for my super minimalist loving friends who want this model for deadlifts. Once again, the shoe does have a thin foam removal insole and the internal construction is finished. And then looking at the 100 Aerolux Barefoot, you have a more thin tread patterning. So throughout here, this tread patterning also wraps up and I haven't had any issues with grip in this model either but it isn't as aggressive and grippy as the Radix. So that is one area I think where the Radix does take the edge over the 100 Aerolux Barefoot. Granted, this model does cost $20 less, so that could be a factor in the differences of the rubbers and the treads using these models, but both models I think should grip pretty well, but if you want the most aggressive grip, the Radix I think is gonna take the win there. And then once again, with the 100 Aerolux Barefoot, you have a removable insole and a finished internal construction. Both of these shoes are pretty dang great. I think if you like more lightweight and breathable shoes, or you like shoes that have like less structure throughout, go with the 100 Aerolux Barefoot. But if you want a bit more toe box width and a bit more toe box room for that matter, and a grippy outsole with a wicked minimalist feeling sole, so we're a shoe that's really dialed in for deadlifts and whatnot, go with the Radix. Either way, I don't think you go wrong. They're just factors with each that I think you'll want to consider when talking about your personal preferences of what you really want in your next barefoot shoe for lifting. All right, y'all, that's up this overview of the Notorious Lift Radix. Now, if you don't feel like waiting for my full review, drop a comment down below if you have any questions on this model and I'll hit you back with whatever you have and then that way you can make a more strategic choice on if this shoe is worth it for your needs or you can hit me up on Instagram, whichever you prefer. But as always, y'all, that video is gonna come out very soon in the next few weeks. So if you wanna stay tuned for that, I will have more details on this shoe. But in the meantime, again, hit me if you have questions. But as always, drop a like on the video, drop subscribe to the channel. I'll see you guys in the next one.